quick update on the uh, ultrasonic project. So on the arbitrary waveform generator I've been goofing around with, um, I programmed the thing in a sweep mode. It'll cover uh, how I got it currently set. It starts off at 24,499 kilohertz and goes up to uh, 27.5 in a 300 second period. Uh, in other words, five minutes. So it'll just keep you just keep cycling back and forth. It'll just gradually ramp all the way up to the top, then start back over again. Up, oh, there's the dogs next door. You turn on the remote right now. Perfect opportunity. Oh, there's the uh, turn off the uh, screensaver on that thing. Oh, he just shut up. Um, turn that back off. But one thing to be aware of on the arbitrary waveform generator, especially running into an amplifier running a constant sine wave into a, one of these tweeters, um, it, it'll overheat the coils really fast. In fact, I just burned one up here just a couple weeks ago. I had the amplifier set for only about, about 40 watts, and I only ran it for about eight minutes, and I smoked the uh, one of the coils on the expensive Orion tweeters that I got. Those are $100 tweeters, and I killed that one. But the nice thing about these, those Orion tweeters, they actually have... Uh, coil, uh, voice coil, they'll sell you voice coil replacements. So they're about $30. So it takes about 10 minutes to put one of them in there. There's the uh, part number on the uh, replacement kit, which is actually nice. And it takes, and I'll show my tweeter here. That's one of the Orions. I painted it for camouflage purposes, but there's the four screws. You'll see there one, two, three, four. That removes the horn. And then on the back side, you just got to cut a little bit around the uh, here because like a screw, a Phillips screw, that releases the uh, that little center piece there. And then you can pull it all apart. But like I said, it takes about ten minutes to tear one of them down and put it back together. And the replacement coils are about uh, thirty dollars, so it's uh, not a bad uh, not a bad loss. You know, it still cost you thirty dollars. But so right now I got the thing set for about fifteen watts. And it seems like it's been holding up pretty good on that, although I'm only just cycling the thing for about 10 minutes at a time. Um, let me finish the video here. The other one got interrupted. So the arbitrary waveform generator um, puts out a constant sine wave into the tweeters. And if, especially if you're using an amplified application, it, it'll heat the voice coils up really quickly. I smoked that, that Orion running 40-ish watts. In less than 10 minutes, it went away but I was able to uh, replace the voice coil for $30. So it's all back up and running again. Uh, right now it's set for about 15 watts and I don't seem to have any problems as of yet. Um, but they definitely drive the tweeters a lot harder than the uh, the chemos. The chemos will certainly heat up a voice coil, you know, for an extended run period, you know, in an amplified application, but they oscillate back and forth. So it gives the voice coil a little bit of a break, but they, we still can easily smoke when I probably from start to finish since I started this project, I probably burned up a total of you know, six tweeters. Um, just kind of learning as I go along. This pile right here, I got two piles on the big agonizer. It's in one of my other videos. It's running 80 watts. And I've ran that thing for 15, 20 minutes at a pop. And they're still up there running. They've been up there for months, just two in parallel. Um, it, they seem like they're doing a really good job. So I just do a quick check or a quick report back on uh, the uh, anti-barking thing. It's it been worked really well. Final thoughts and recommendations. Um, if you're intending on running a amplified ultrasonic device, I would hook every, get everything working and hook the speakers up before you mount them. And then just, you know, turn it on and monitor how hot they get. You can tell by touching the back of the coils the back of the speakers. If it starts getting really warm really quick, they won't last long. They will burn up pretty quickly. I'm just kind of trying to find a happy medium for power and uh, run time. Of course, there's another factor. If they're outside on it's a really hot day, they'll just heat up that much quicker. But the non-amplified ones, if you're just gonna run the chemo in these sweeters, you won't have any problems at all. I've never smoked one of those on that. Um, as far as the, the dog training, um, how those devices, the intent of those things is to get the dog to learn. When it barks, it hears a noise it don't like and it stops barking. The problem is when you got two dogs, it takes them a while to make that connection. So initially the dogs are the side of me, which don't make noise at night, but during the day they can get pretty annoying. And there have been some afternoons I just turned on the non-amplified 
uh, one. And I just let it run all afternoon to get them to settle down because they would just go all afternoon, just bark, 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 bark at nothing. And so once they got to the point where they're just, you know, quiet a lot of the time, then I could start the training process. When they bark, I turn it on, let it run, and then it shuts itself off. And over time, as I said, two dogs, it takes longer because you get, you know, one dog might be barking, the other one might not be barking, or they might be barking at the same time. And it took on those two dogs next door about a month or so. And then pretty soon they started making the connection. Now it's, it's pretty amazing how quiet they are. There's some afternoons I will not hear a peep out of them things. Um, so it was, it was definitely worth the effort. It's a whole different world over here, uh, sound wise, listening to that barking stuff. Uh, another recommendation, if you're gonna run an amplified uh, uh, ultrasonic device, I would recommend getting a power supply that has an amp meter because it's an easy way to monitor what's going on because obviously if they're in the ultrasonic range, you're not gonna hear it. So even though the lights might all be on, if you smoke one of the voice coils, you'll have no idea. So I'm gonna show you a walk across the garage here. So with the power supplies on the big one here, this is overkill, but just when I got, so this is an amp meter, so I'll turn it on right there. So it's drawn 10, 11 amps right there. But I can look at that at a glance and see everything's working normal. If, if you smoke a tweeter, that current will go down to nothing. So it's just a quick way to monitor it, short of just, you know, turning out the bypass if you got an audio delay or turning down the chemo uh, or the arbitrary waveform generator into the sound wave. It's just an easy way to just walk by and see everything's working normal. So it does work. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of patience to uh, train the dogs, but um, it's been totally worth it over here. It's a whole different world, like I said, as far as barking, way more quiet. Anyway, good luck with your project.